Athens is truly one of the greatest cities to ever exist on this earth. It has been continuously inhabited to this day for at least 5,000 years. It was an important centre for the Mycenaean civilization, and afterwards, from 900 BC onwards, becoming one of the most prosperous and important cities for trade and civilization in the region. In the Greco-Persian Wars, Athens, together with Sparta, would band together with a number of other Greek city-states to repel the Persians from the lands of Greece. And in the decades that followed, Athens became a cultural centre that laid the foundations for Western civilization and philosophical thought. But at the start of RIS, Athens has been under the thumb of Macedon for some years, with the Piraeus, its great port, being under their control and military garrison for 12 long years. So today, in this mod, can we lay the foundations for a new Delian League under the great leadership of one of the greatest cities to ever exist in the world? The city of Athens. Hi guys, welcome back. I am Red Z, and today we have something extremely exciting for you all. A faction guide to Athens in RAS version 0.6. And Athens is notorious. It has been notorious since 0.5, where I thought it was potentially the hardest nation in the game. And in 0.6, it doesn't get that much easier. In, in fact, it gets a little bit harder. So we are going to show you today how you can survive and how you can thrive as Athens and reform the Delian League if you want to later down the campaign with a glorious start as the Athenian city. And of course, you start here in Attica with many enemies to contend with on your road to success. The Antigonids have you under their thumb with the Piraeus in their hands. And the Boeotians, your allies, sit nearby. And if you want to go on to the Peloponnese, there are plenty of enemies, including your mortal enemies, the Spartans, to contend with. You do have these two Aegean islands out here, potentially a remnant of the Delian League. But honestly, these just kind of lead to you getting navally invaded every now and then. So they are not that useful and that helpful. So you really are going to have to carve out your own empire in central Greece, Attica and Euboea or Evia and in the Peloponnese if you really want to succeed as Athens. Of course, there are other options like sailing away, but we are not going to do that today, guys. We are going to forge our own empire around Athens itself. So let's talk about the strengths and weaknesses of Athens. And honestly, there is not that many strengths of Athens, to be honest, at the start of the game. It's very difficult, guys. It's very, very, very difficult. One of the strengths, though, I would say is that you get this Athenian Epibartai. And this is one of the best Epibartai units in the game. Now, it doesn't seem like they are that good when you look at the stats. But I promise you that this unit is actually really, really good. First of all, 11 melee attack doesn't sound amazing, but they use a sword. So that's good. 50 morale is really good. 33 defense is decent about a Thurio Foroi unit. They have two javelins and they are a light infantry. Now, this is the most important thing with these guys. They are a light infantry with very good stamina and fast moving. Now, that doesn't seem like a lot, but when you are on a battle, especially a battle that lasts quite a long time, this very good stamina... Um, trait is very underrated because of course the more stamina they lose the worse they're gonna fight and fast moving as well is hugely underrated for an infantry unit they can catch probably Acontisti, that sort of thing we'll test it out in a battle but they should be relatively fast and able to catch some of the weaker units you're going to be facing now they're not going to be able to stand up late game against cohorts and against um, you know Agima, Phalangites and stuff, especially if they don't have any upgrades. 
But early game, this unit is very, very good. Now, your second strength is that you start with Athens. <laughs> Let's be honest. One of the few minor cities and cities at the start of the game. And this city is fantastic. You start with a lot of buildings, including Plato's Academy, which will give traits and um, retinues to your characters like you've never seen before. And you also get the Acropolis too, as well as an Odeon, mine, silver mines, a shipwright, and good military buildings too. And you're already making on very high taxes 3,800 from this single city at the start of the game. Now that is really, really good. So let's move on to your weaknesses, guys. And first things first, your roster, like many of the central Greek rosters, is relatively limited. You have some good Epibartai, some decent-ish Hoplites, 37 defense, 14 and 10. Not too bad at all, in fact. But apart from that, not really much else. I mean, the Epilectoi are a great unit to get later down the line when you can. And when you get your reforms, you get your Tarantine Cavalry, your Espido Foroi when you have one huge city. And some Thurio Foroi from controlling 10 cities. But overall, it is not exactly the most expansive roster. You don't get access to Phalangites. But like I've said, with all these weaknesses on the rosters, that can easily be corrected with AOR. Your second weakness is, of course, the fact that you are surrounded by enemies. And I include the Boeotian League in that, my friends. Although they are allies, because we are playing on very hard, very hard, like we will show you very hard, very hard, then they probably will come and smash our face in at some point. So uh, <laughs> you really don't start in a good position. Athens is a great city, but it is surrounded by vultures ready to feed on its carcass. So you are going to have to absolutely scrap your way out of this fight, my friends. Absolutely scrap your way out to win this campaign. And along with that, because Athens is your only real city, it is your only real recruitment hub. These areas over here have a little bit of an ability to recruit, not much, but getting your ship there and back would be an absolute nightmare if you're at war with the Antigonids or anyone really, because navies in this mod are uber aggressive. And when a battle is taken you cannot retreat from it so if you had you know half an army on this and the antigonids come and boat bomb you you are going to die and lose <laughs> so yeah you know you really don't have much recruitment capability early game and your starting army is shoddy it is not good it is not big it is not better than the Boeotian one. That is better. And all of the armies around you of the Antigonids can be put together to make a much stronger army than you. So militarily, you are very, very, very weak at the start of the campaign. So let's now move on to the unit roster, guys. So guys, let's have a look at the Athenian roster. And I'm going to try and go through this relatively quickly because we have seen the all of these rosters before you can check those out in the description down below but the athenian roster is relatively limited compared to the big factions like all the central greek factions notably you don't get no phalangites at all so you're gonna have to rely on aor ones to bring those into play however you do start with some athenian hoplites which are Slightly better than the normal hoplite, so one more defense, a little bit more morale than the standard levy hoplite. So they're all right, they're not amazing, but you do also, at quite a low level, get this Epibarti unit. Now, I would suggest that this unit is a lot better than its stats portray because it's got missiles, it's got javis, it's got 33 defense, which is relatively decent, 14 of which is against missiles, and it's got 11 miss melee attack. With a sword, so that is better than a spear with 11 melee attack. And 15 morale, which is really good. Now, notably with these guys, they have very good stamina and they are fast moving. So these units are pretty much perfect 
flanking units. And also, they look excellent, don't they? They look fantastic. That always comes into play. But these guys look amazing. In the late game, of course, they're going to be a little bit weak. But they are a decent unit early game. And that very good stamina and fast moving makes them very good at the early point of the game when you're going to be fighting a lot of slow moving infantry. So, along with that, you do also, before reforms, get access to the Athenian Epileptoi at large city level. So, these guys, 44 defense, 17 morale, and 13 melee attack. They are a very strong spearman unit, basically a hoplite, but an Epileptoi, so hero, spot, uh, hero hoplite unit, if I can speak. These guys are very, very, very good. So, uh, when you can get these guys... Get them in the army, start replacing your hoplites with them, and use them as the main body of your army, with the epibarti around the sides to flank. Very, very good indeed. Now, when you get your first reform, which is to own 10 cities, you get access to these boys, the Thurio Foroi. So it's a relatively easy reform to get, owning 10 cities. Now, they are an okay Thurio Foroi unit, 14 morale, 12 melee attack, and 34 defense. They're absolutely fine. Now, going on to your missile troops. In general, pretty standard. You've got your Akontista, your Greek slingers, your Greek archers, and your Greek peltas. But you do get access to a slightly different archer unit over here. This is the Peripoloi. These guys are spearmen archers. So they are a lot better than the Greek archers. So when you can get access to these guys, use them every time over the Greek archers, unless you've got AOR Rhodian Slingers or Cretans slash Neo Cretans as well. As you can see, 16 defense versus 7, 8 melee attack, which isn't good, admittedly. It's not good, but uh, it's a lot better than the Greek archers do. And they also have one more missile attack, the same range as well. So they're just a better version of the Greek archers. So you want to get access to them quickly and start using them over the Greek archers when you can. Now, in terms of the cavalry, you, of course, have your Greek general's bodyguard. You've got your prodromoi, but you also have your Athenian Zistaphoroi, which is, I think, pretty similar to the standard Zistaphoroi. I think they're better in attack and worse in defense, but I could be wrong. It could be the other way around. But yeah, pretty standard Zista 4 unit. And then when you get your second reforms, you get access to two more cavalry units. So your second reforms is to have a huge city. So again, with Athens starting as a minor city, that is, that is not that difficult to get. You get the spear version of the Espido 4 so not the javelin version. And these guys, as we can see, if we compare them to the Zista 4 just basically better than the Zista 4 in everything. Better defense, better charge, and better alt attack with same morale and same melee attack, as you can see. So just a much better version of them and a decent heavy cavalry unit that can see you through to the end of the game. And along with that, if you want your missile options, you have the Tarantine Boyos over here. So the Tarantine Cavalry, which a few factions have access to and, and, and is also an AOR unit in Tarentum, of course. These guys are a really, really good versatile missile unit. If we have a look at the Zistaphora, you can see these guys pretty much have the same defense as the Zistaphora, but they are a javelin cavalry unit. And on top of that, they don't have an amazing charge of only 26, but you are going to do so much damage with your javelins I don't like Missile Cav, guys. <laughs> I've been very open about this throughout everything that I say. But yeah, this unit is very versatile and very good. So overall, you know, even if the, the roster is limited by its lack of Phalangites and by its lack of sort of some of the more really heavy cavalry or really heavy infantry uh, or shock infantry in general, definitely, um, it still has some standout units. The Epibartai the Epilectoi, and the Tarantines and Espido Foroi after that huge city. All really good units, and it's a relatively good unit roster that you can use to standard effect. There's not a huge amount of versatility. Like, it's not like you're going to have the ability to kind of choose whatever army you want. 
I mean, you can do. That's with any faction. But it is going to force you into, you know, hoplite lines with Epibartai, um, Epibartai flankers with some good heavy and missile cavalry to help you out in the fight. So that is it for the unit roster, guys. I will see you back on the campaign map. So let's now have a look at the temples you get access to and kind of an interesting mix, I've got to say, of the temples in here because nothing is really incredible for one thing or another, but they're all relatively decent depending on what you want to do. So you have the shrine to Zeus, which gives you lore, but also the shrine to Nemesis, which gives you lore. And this one reduces defensive buildings construction cost, the Temple of Zeus, which is your wall. So not exactly that useful throughout the game. And then military buildings uh, construction cost reduction for the Temple of Nemesis there as well. At Pantheon level, they do pretty much both have the extra little bonuses in there. So this is a slight difference, my friends. The Temple of Nemesis will give you a bit of population growth, public order bonus, and military building construction. Whereas the Temple of Zeus will give you farmland size rather than that straight 1% bonus and the defensive building's construction cost. So overall, I think in your recruitment hubs, this Temple of Nemesis is best because military buildings, you're going to be building a lot more of them than you are walls. And then your final temple is the Temple of Poseidon, which is actually a really good temple that will give you trade income bonus which is amazing now in the mod that is fantastic and special weapons which will upgrade your ships guys your ships and any special weapons like the rhodian slingers for example so a really good building to build in places where you're going to be recruiting ships and also places where you have a lot of trade. So overall, relatively interesting selection of temples there. None that give you, you know, armor and weapons. So you're going to have to rely on the armories for that. And none that really give you farmland or growth too much. So you're going to have to rely on your farms and all that sort of thing. For that. So guys, here we are with the most important part of the video. And if you have reached this far, guys, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. I hope you enjoy all the effort that goes into these videos. You know, I play about two hours plus per guide so we can get this guide out to you. And I personally think that it is much better for me to do this and play this campaign rather than just tell you what to do. And I hope you guys appreciate that too. So today, of course, we are with Athens and there is many, many strategies you can do. Like I've said, for every faction, you can do anything you want pretty much if you want to do it. I mean, I could sail to Rome if I wanted, but that would be a terrible, terrible idea. But honestly, with Athens, there are only really three different options, maybe a fourth. The first option is to sail. Sail away into the sunset and go after something like the Aegean Islands out here because they are very weakly, weakly defended. And also the Ptolemies should be busy with some other people. Now that is a good strategy. I'm not going to show you that today because there is a risk with that one that you do get boat bombed. So uh, <laughs> the AI I have found in 0.6 loves, 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 loves to boat bomb you. Like, they love it. I don't know why. They just they just really, really enjoy a boat bomb. So, um, so yeah, you can go for the islands. That is absolutely fine. No problem. Just remember, though, if you do do the sail away tactic, so combined with that, if you don't go for the Aegeans and the Ptolemies, go for Crete, and that also is a good strategy. But just remember, if you do do that, you leave Athens pretty much undefended. And in my opinion, the jewel in the crown of Athens, unsurprisingly, is Athens. I mean, if you take some of these cities out here and Athens gets taken, you have no ability to recruit anything good. You're going to have to rely on these two islands and it's very likely that your ship's going to get destroyed. So for me, this is a highly risky strategy sailing away, especially when you have the Antigonids on your borders, and you're playing on very hard, very hard extreme mode. <laughs> so second strategy, my friends, is pretty much the strategy we did for the Boeotians, and that is to attack 
the Piraeus or uh, Megara straight away and go for the Antigonid settlement in there. And then turn and look to new enemies. Now, this is a very good strategy. And I think this is probably, you know, for an experienced player, probably the best. Because you're going to be expecting a Boeotian attack, even though you're allied to them. So I don't think you'd be too put off by that if you go for the Antigonids straight away. However, if you're new, that might surprise you. And you might not know how to deal with it. So my third strategy for us today, guys, the one that I am going to be doing is pretty much the same as what I've just said. But it's to take out the Boeotians first. <laughs> and I know they ally us. I know they do. But I do not give a flying fuck that they ally us. Because, do you know why, guys? Do you know why? Because they couldn't give two fucks either. They literally couldn't care less. The AI literally thinks that all alliances are handshake agreements that were made in a bar on a drunken Friday night with no witnesses. They do not care at all. So you should not care either. That is still my advice to you is even if you can get alliances just to maybe make buffer states, that sort of thing, especially with the Greek city states. If there is an enemy on your border or a faction on your border and you are playing on harder difficulties then yes, they are very likely to attack you at some point. Now, I'm going to qualify one thing here. If you are playing on medium or low, you may want to go for the Antigonid uh, uh, tactic first rather than the Boeotians because if you're playing on medium and low, there's a much lower chance that the Boeotians are going to attack you because they're allied. But because we're playing on hard or very hard, that is where we're going to go for the Boeotians because like I say, on those difficulties... They really couldn't care less about that alliance. So, we are going to do that tactic, guys. And we have already made everywhere onto the highest it can be. That could be on very high, but I'm going to keep it on half a percent growth. This one, as well, cannot go to very high, unfortunately. And we have a couple of generals in here. We've got Philokoros, who is 70. We've got Krimenides, who is 50. And then we've got a pretty darn dreadful army. So what we are going to do is I am going to get my diplomat and in order to keep our diplomatic reputation and help us out in future, I am going to cancel the military access and alliance and do that straight away. So that's going to hurt our reputation slightly, but that is going to help us out in the long run. And then I'm going to go into the city transgressed against the Boeotians. I really don't care. So let's have a look at the army we have now. If we go straight for the attack here, outside of the, with the whole army, let's see what happens. Will he stand and fight? We are going to attack them. No, he will not. So we are not going to do that. We're going to do something slightly different. And hopefully the AI is going to accept the draw out battle. One thing I forgot to do, guys, because I was getting so into that, <laughs> into fighting the Boeotians is make sure that we do our buildings and all that sort of thing. Now, in my opinion, the best building you can build here is that army barracks. Because on level 3, we can get the Epilectoi, which is going to hold us throughout the game. This is going to last into the late game as well. And if we can get that ASAP, that is going to be fantastic. However, 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 however... We are going to get an Epibartai instead because we need more troops. Our army is just so, so awful. What we're going to do, though, instead is we're going to use both of these guys because they aren't actually that good as, um, as governors for building costs. They are good for improving the amount of money in here. But for building costs, they don't make that much difference. We're going to come out of the city. I'm going to cancel, re-cancel. That alliance in there, that does make our reputation go down by 10, but that's fine. And I am going to attack this army. I'm going to attack it from here rather than in there this time, although that won't make a difference. And you can see with these three units, we can actually fight these guys on the battlefield and do a draw out battle, which is fantastic. I wonder whether they would have done it with two Prodromoi, but I didn't want to risk it, so we're going to do it with one. And let's see whether we can beat these two units. It should not be too difficult, even though that is a 30-man 
Filler Comos is a 30-man general. This guy's only 14. We've got a 42 and a 30. And a Prodromoy. So we should be fine. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. But let's see, guys. So I've tested this battle a couple of times already, guys. And what's happened both times is I have waited for the other general to come in. And both of them have then just withdrawn. Um, so definitely not worth doing that in this case. Now, I would normally recommend that just to make sure they don't withdraw. Is to wait for this other general to come in. But what we're going to do, we're going to send the Prodromoy off to deal with that second general. While I pulverize this general in our first army uh, and just see how we can do that way is he going to withdraw i don't know we need to go for the attack though we're going to go for both sides of course i want you to go and attack that general or at least cut them off from the fight here we go we're going to rally the men as well so this guy doesn't die he is 70 though so it doesn't really matter if he dies to be honest but look at that absolutely pulverize them from both sides we've not even lost a single man yet they just stood there and just took it uh, so we are just going to come in and try to intercept this general and make sure he doesn't run away. That is the main thing. He does not want to run away. Well, we don't want him to run away because then the uh, the draw-out battle is pointless. Is pointless. So we're going to bring this guy. We're going to get the Prodromoy across here now. Looks like the other general is, in fact, chasing us now, which is glorious. That is actually fantastic. We're going to get the Prodromoy across there to intercept this general and then we're going to pulverize this second general now we're a little bit more tired now but we should still pulverize it even if we have you know a few uh, good men they have got 30 men in this bodyguard or 28 should we say let's go for the charge then again here we go and let's also he's already rallied there see so there's no point wasting a rally but there we go and we should be able to charge these guys in the back Come on, Prodromoy. You should be fast enough to catch him. If you're not, I am going to be eternally upset with you, my friends. Eternally upset. That is probably the moniker for my autobiography at some point. Um, but yeah. <laughs> there we go. At least one general has died. So let's continue because, of course, we've got to make sure that we kill this general. These guys are still on fire at will. That is the main thing. So they can still fire. But please kill him before he gets out there. Please, come on. They're not even hitting him. Hit him. Hit him, guys. You dickheads. Hit him, you dickheads. Hit him. You idiots. Come on. How is? How have you not killed him? They, oh, yes. Come on. Just as he runs off the map. Bastard. Nice. Good. <laughs> Glorious victory, my friends. Nice and easy. None of them left. Very good. Indeed. And a glorious victory, my friends. Very nice indeed. So what we're going to do is we are going to leave a unit behind. And we are going to go siege down Orchomenos straight away. Now, that sounds like a crazy idea with all their infantry. It truly does sound like a crazy idea. However, 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 however. I think in a draw-out battle where they come out of the city, we can win that battle. We're also going to take Tanagra, of course. I am going to enslave. I know a lot of you want me to occupy, and I could occupy too. But for now, I want Athens to grow. So you can see we got 400 population from that. Doesn't mean we have to go down slightly in the old population. And we're also going to get... All the guys across. Can these guys reach there too? They can do. Now, I am betting on this army coming out of the settlement to attack us. Now, it is a bet. They may not. And if they do not, then we're in slight trouble. But <laughs> for now, I think they will want to come out because they will see this as a much weaker army than theirs. So hopefully we can do them dirty in this. They do have some Boeotian Hoplites who are a pretty good unit. Same as the uh, Thurio-Foroi for them. Although their Thurio-Foroi doesn't have Javis. And then the rest of their troops, I think we can deal with all right. This guy is a general. So we don't need to worry about them turning rebel if we kill this general as well. But I think overall, 
it is a decent strategy. Now, I didn't want to put the spy in there anyway, because if I did that, then, and they open the gates, I mean, they could, that, it doesn't really matter if they open the gates, because I'm not going to siege it down anyway. But yeah, we're going to bring the spy out onto the Peloponnese, and for the rest of the turn, I'm just going to get my guy to go around and talk to as many neighbors as possible, especially the Greek city-states, and trying to get trade. No, they really don't want it. We'll talk to the Aetolians too, but no, no one wants it because we're playing on very hard. I mean, even the Antigonids I would take. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, diplomacy on very hard, guys. Pretty darn brutal, I'm not going to lie. But now that we have some extra money from enslaving Tanagra, let's get our building in. Wait, why did that go? It was only on 65. Oh yeah, because we took all the troops out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for maybe they're trying to the Poseidon. Let's have a look. Only 66 from that. 68 from the farming, but the farming is more expensive. So trying to Poseidon is worth it in the long run. And then over this way, we are going to go for the land clearance in Marina. We're going to have to put those down as well because we've got more, more people in here and land clearance there because it's really cheap. And then finally, we may go for another unit if we can afford it. Probably not. Probably not worth it. We're going to put this ship in the docks. I'm going to keep the ship this time, guys. Just in case that we want to bring any troops over from over there. And I think we're in a good position. We're still making money, which is fantastic. I'm going to put you down to low. Should be okay. And we'll destroy this building. Actually, that's enough money now. Potentially to build the proper barracks. How much is that? 6,000. So if we could sell 500 of map information to someone, that would be excellent. How about 500 gold for my map information, my friends? You no, they hate us. They really do hate us. <laughs> so instead of that, we are going to go for the original tactic. It's only two turns to get the Shrine to Poseidon. So we're only delaying ourselves by two turns. But if you can somehow cheese yourself an extra 500 gold, guys, I would build that barracks straight away. So let's end the turn and let's see where we get to. And of course, they decide to come out of the city. Fantastic. We are very heavily going to have to rely on both our cavalry and also our hoplites to hold the line as long as possible so that we can use our cavalry to maximum effect to mop up all of these missile troops, the prodromoi and the general as well, and then charge the infantry in the back. So let's see. They're doing a night battle. I don't know why. This guy does have eight command, which is pretty darn good. But that means when he dies, they're going to run, my friends. They're going to run. So let's see how we do. Can we win this battle on very hard? It's a nice challenge, isn't it? Let's see. And always remember, unlike me, that when they do this, they come out of the settlement straight away. So we're going to get our guys nicely spread out in here. Now, they will very likely come out one by one, which is fantastic for us. So I'm going to get the archers slightly there. I'm also going to get my two Prodromoi on this side. Remember, they will get shot by towers, but we don't want to worry about that too much. So if they're going to leave their Neoniskoi out like that, we should go and surround these boys, especially the Hoplites too. But once they bring all those guys out, this is going to be fantastic for us. I'm going to keep these guys off fire at will for now. Just to try and make something better. The Neoniskoi do have javelins. So we are going to charge into them. What is this? Hoplites. You guys go for the hoplites. Don't like those javelins, my friends. I really don't like them. So we're going to go straight in the Greek archers there. Hopefully we don't get attacked by the Akontistai too much. Now our guys are in melee. They've got to hold for as long as possible. That is the most important thing here. Get, get, get there. Get there. What's this? That's Akontistai too. So let's just go for the charge. One of you can charge the Akontistai, one of you the archers. They shouldn't like that at all. So let's go for the charge and try and get rid of all of these troops so that we have a, lo a lot easier battle to do afterwards. Look at that. They are getting absolutely shredded there, my friends. Absolutely shredded. So let's come out for a second. I don't want them to fire a javelin, so we are going to charge the Prodromoi in. I know the Prodromoi are not great for melee, but that is going to hopefully stop them firing their javelins into the back of the guys and maybe break a few more. Then we're going to come out. Come out, boys. Come out. And then we're going to get our general over here again. Ho hopefully not shot by the towers too much. 
So that is good. Fantastic. They also have their 304 out now as well. Let's see what we can do about these guys. So we've got our archers in there. Don't use fire arrows. I want you to fire at the 304 rather than anyone else. And if that 304 comes out a little bit, Neoniskoid 2, we are going to go around this way and try and deal with the rest of the missile troops while they are organizing the rest of the boys in here. Neoniskoi in there. I do want you guys to run away. I want you to bait them. Now, they do have the Prodromoi over that way too. I really need to kill their general. That's the main thing. I think we could route these guys very easily if we kill their general. Looks like they're coming into the fight. That's fantastic for us. So you guys fire at them again. So we are going to get our guys into the Greek archers here nice and easy and then kill the rest of these missile troops pretty darn nicely, in fact. So how are our hoplites doing? A few of them are a little bit damaged, but that's fine. We should be able to break all of these boys very quickly now. You guys come out, and then I think I'm going to go for the general. There we go. They've broken. They've broken. These guys are shaken. There's only 30 of them. Surely they're going to break very soon. Let's go for that. And now we've got the general on the way. So let's go for the old attack on the general. He has a lot of general's bodyguards. So let's come out. Let's come out. We don't want to mess around with that too much, especially when this unit hasn't broken. Oh, it has broken now, but they are kind of in the way. That's the main thing. We don't want to worry about them too much while they're in the way. So let's come out all the way out. I know we're going to get shot by the towers a little bit, but it is very important not to take fights when you know you're going to lose, guys. Do not take fights. Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu, isn't it? <laughs> no when to retreat, basically. So what we're going to do, we're going to get our general to charge him. We're also going to get this general to charge him too. And we're going to get our Prodromoi around the back. Now, the Prodromoi are not that impactful. But they should do just tip the balance for us here, really. So come around this way, guys. I'm also going to tell them to fire for a little bit. See if they can get rid of much of this general. Nope, we're not going to tell them to fire, apparently. But that's actually probably helped. So let's go for the general. Look at him. He got shredded. I don't think he charged. He got absolutely ruined, my friends. Ruined, I tell you. Only two of them left. So once we've killed him, everything else should be quite nice. Apart from our guys routing, that's... That's never nice. There we go. That's the king. He is dead. So what we're going to do now is charge straight in the side of these guys. I don't really care about the uh, the Prodromoi firing anymore. So fire as much as you want, my friends. Here we go. We've got lots of cavalry left. So we just need to try and break a few of these units. 114. There we go. 97. Big charge. Big charge. There we go. Looks like the Prodromoi are getting a bit shredded in that. I'm not going to lie. But let's come out. Let's come out. We've got this unit back now as well. Good. Right, we're just gonna we're just gonna halt. We're just gonna halt and let's see what we can do. The Prodromoy have both run. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they do not like it, the Prodromoy, apparently. Where is this Perry Boilo guy? Who are you leading away? Ah, <laughs> the Neoniskoi. <laughs> That's actually fantastic. I don't mind that at all. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna sneak. We're gonna be a sneaky sneaky sneak. We're gonna be a sneaky snack for a little while. Come away from the Prodromoy for now. Don't want to get chewed up by this hoplite unit for the time being. But once we've done this, once we've killed this Prodromoi, we are going to sneak into the city and take the town square and see whether the AI does anything about it. I feel like, oh my god. Now that was what you call cavalry dominance, my friends. Wow. That was insane. Did you see how quickly they just fell? That was insane. Right, Prodromoi back. What we're going to do with the Prodromoi is just bait units. So I want you guys to go and fire at them. I also want you on skirmish mode. Same with you. And I want you guys to go and fire at, say, maybe one of these boys. We're going to try and make these guys rout, and we're going to come through. Straight through, my friends. Straight through. And we're going to try and kill all of these guys on the way back to the town square. And just take the town square. Now, dirty tactic. Definitely, definitely a very dirty tactic. Get away, get away. There we go. That's better. That's better. Get away, get away. You guys can charge this Akontistai. Here we go. We've come through. Kill all of them Greek archers, and then we'll kill the Prodromoi on the town square. And we have baited everyone so far away that they really won't be able to react. Now, it is a dirty tactic, but when you're playing on very hard and you're playing the hardest nation in the game think it's something that you might need to do every now and then. 
A bit of a dirty old tactic. I mean, exploiting the AI is nothing new in Total War, guys, is it? <laughs> you guys get away. Get away, get away. We're going to put you on that. And we're also going to make sure that you're on fire at will to fire at the enemy. They are going to chase us down. That is so strange. I don't know why. How slow are you guys? Kill these guys before they come back in the fight. <laughs> right, we're going to speed it up now and just see what happens. There we go. Kill all of them. Kill the Prodromoi. Just kill everyone on the town square. That's the main thing. Kill them all. Kill them all. There we go. And we're going to just stay here. They're so far away now that there's no way in hell that they will even come close to us. You guys are a bit stuck. Don't want you getting stuck. Looks like they're coming back. <laughs> well, I'll speed this up, guys. And hopefully they haven't come back. By the time we get in there. I mean, if they come through the gates, I'm just going to charge them and stop them getting on the town square. Filthy tactics, but victorious ones nonetheless. Oh dear, my friends. I feel almost dirty in this victory. But like I say, you've got to take what you've got to take. <laughs> filthy, filthy victory, but a glorious one nonetheless. Let's end the battle. We still killed a lot more than them. They just still had a lot of troops left. And our hoplites just didn't have the metal to stick in the fight for long enough for us to win that legitimately. So we've absolutely cheesed it. Glorious cheese, my friends. Back onto the campaign map. And for Orkomenos, again, we're going to enslave. Now, I know it's controversial, but I still think putting the population in Athens and these two settlements that we already have recruitment hubs in, and also Athens is has really negative population growth at this point, we need to force it to grow with enslavement. So I still think overall in the long run, this is going to be better. But again, it is controversial. So as you can see, Athens is, uh, is not very happy. And that makes sense. But by forcing it to grow, and we've also got positive population growth now from this, that will be because of slavery in a lot of cases. So you can see that plus 1%. If we didn't have that right now, we'd be on zero and still not growing each turn. Uh, especially if we had more, like, a, you know, higher tax rate, we'd be very much on a low and negative population growth. So we've got one more city to take out from the Boeotians. So I'm going to take all of these boys apart from... I'm going to combine these Prodromoi. Leave behind 13 men. Hopefully that's enough. There we go. Fantastic. We're going to put it down to low as well. 906 it's making already. And we're just going to go straight for Thebes and take it next turn. It is their final guy in there as well. So we do want to make sure it is an actual siege battle. I am slightly worried about Tanagra being taken over, but for now, that's fine. And we can do the same thing we did last time if we want with this draw-out battle. That would be glorious, but for now, I don't think we need to do it. Imbros has expanded, so because we've got the money now, I'm going to just queue it in there straight away just to make sure that I don't forget about it because... Yeah, I'm very likely to forget about it in future. If I don't do that, you can leave it till the actual turn so you know how much money you really do have. Now, in Orkomenos, let's have a look. Let's have a look. Maybe a port in here would be good. Let's go 217. That is fantastic. Now, I am tempted not to build a port in Tanagra, as good as it will be. 86. That's actually not very good. Uh, I mean, yeah, farming is, is close to that. I'm going to leave that for now, just so next turn we can build the army barracks. I also want a little bit of leeway there, just in case. Just in case this Epibartai makes that we don't, means that we don't have 3,000 next turn. So I just want a little bit just in case so we can build that army barracks. So let's end the turn, guys, and let's see what happens. Maybe Antigonids will come and take Tanagra. I don't know. Maybe. And look at this. Sparta's attacked the Antigonids. And Messene has gone for the cheekiest little dive bomb. I love that. What a fantastic move by Messene. These poor Spartans. They don't know what they're doing really, do they? <laughs> We've had two turns. So you should have built walls, my friend. You should have built walls. But I guess not in their nature, is it? So let's take Thebes first. Because then we'll have enough money to build that thing in Athens. Also, also, 
Why did I not destroy this? God damn. Dumbo, Dumbo. Now, bear in mind in the, in the new patch that they're going to be releasing, guys, at some point soon, that may not be an option for you to do. So, um, obviously, in this uh, release version, that is a very nice way of getting money, but they're trying to reduce that down now as well. So, yeah, in future, you may not be able to get that much money from this place. This is also a fantastic place for a recruitment hub because of all those juicy recruitment buildings in there. But let's go for this. I am going to also win attacker. Otherwise, this guy will kill like all of our troops, like 500 troops or something. 12 this time. That's good. <laughs> Fantastic. And in Thebes, we are just going to occupy because its population is so low. And the Boeotian League is dead. Fantastic. Three turns in, we've taken them out, my friends. And like I say... That handshake agreement worked out well for us, didn't it? Fantastic. Treat the AI like it treats you. So pretty much, treat them like shit. <laughs> so let's go to Athens and let's make sure that we build this. We can also build the Hippodrome. So whatever you think is more important, my friends. So whether you want to get the Athenian Zistaphoroi, which is a pretty weak Zistaphoroi unit, I'm pretty sure. Let's have a look. At someone else who's got Zista for it. That's Tarantines, isn't it? Uh, anyone else around here got not Spartans, obviously. God damn. They, they, they do not have Zista for it. <laughs> um, anyone else around here that has Zista for it? You've got Prodromoy. How about this army? Here we go. Uh, actually, that's not much difference. That's pretty similar, in fact. But yeah, I mean, Athenian Zista for is no better or worse, I guess, than standard. Zista for a 12, 12, 15, 12, 12, and 23 and 35. What about this one? This is 15, 13, 12, but only because of that experience. 23, so they've got a bit more defense and a bit less charge and a bit less melee attack, it seems, the standard Zista for a. So not really much difference with our Athenian boyos, to be fair. So what are we going to do now? Well, First things first is we are going to go home for a bit of retraining. And for now, because we are not at war with the Antigonids, we are just going to go home with everyone. Now, this is very risky, my friends. Very risky indeed. But if you don't want to do this, then just leave your smallest unit behind and you should be fine. In fact, while we are here in Athens, hmm... Yes, interesting, interesting. See, this is the problem with Athens. Like, you have plenty of routes for expansion, just not the ability to expand with such such few um, troops. Potentially, maybe on the first turn, if we recruited another Hoplite, that would have been useful. Or an Akontistai, because we could have got them back before we went to war with the Antigonids. So maybe I should have done that. Maybe that was a bit of an oversight. But for now, that's fine. We're going to recruit some more... Epibartai in there too. And we are, of course, first things first, gonna go for a recruitment hub. We'll go for one in Tanagra. Actually, Orkomenos is the best option for a recruitment hub. But honestly, right now, you know, getting a level one in Orkomenos will not really do that much for us. All we're gonna be able to get is the Akontistai and Prodromoi, which is exactly what we'll be able to get if we get this in here. Actually, we'll only be able to get the Prodromoi. So, yeah, not fantastic either way. How are we looking here? Not great either. But I think that's fine. We can get the Prodromoi in there. And in Orkomenos, we will get that when the port is done. I got a little bit greedy and just looked at the money, to be honest, guys. <laughs> Ideally, you probably should have built that Athenian recruitment. But it's not going to slow us down too much either. Now, in Thebes... Let's get the trader in there. And then I will actually recruit another Akontistai up here. And a Greek hoplite there. And we're going to get our ship across. Hopefully we can sneak this guy back. Oh, he's got a lot of movement. So hopefully we can sneak this guy back on our way back. And that'll be fine. But like I say, don't make my mistakes, guys. Don't make my mistakes. Build a recruitment hub in Orkomenos straight away. Rather than a port. I mean, we could still do it now. I just, yeah, I don't know. That port's already done a turn. It just feels like a waste of money to do that when we need money as much as possible 
right now. So, yep, we're going to retrain all these boys. I probably will wait until this Epibartai is ready to go as well. And we really need more generals. We really do, because I want to garrison these places. Leaving them like this, bordering the Antigonids, is just a recipe for getting invaded. So, uh, yeah, we really do need that. I'm going to also try to get alliances and stuff, but I'll do that off camera, guys. So if you're really, really strapped for money, you can definitely cheese the AI for alliances, trade agreements, all that sort of thing. Now, when I'm doing these guides, the only cheese I like to use, apart from, you know, that draw out battle, <laughs> let's ignore that, um, is to do it for map information. So for now, I'm just going to be nice and just do an alliance with Sparta rather than, I know it's an unholy alliance, guys. Like I say, it's fine. Proposal. We should be good. Now, hopefully the GCS will want to actually get an alliance with us now. No. Demanding. They really don't want it. But that's fine. Uh, we've got at least one ally in the fight against Macedon for now. Hmm. Hello, Aetolians. So what I was going to say actually after this end turn was you can build a fort here and it will stop the Aetolians coming into your lands. But it very much looks like the Aetolians want to come and party. Now... If they do attack us, which is a big if, they may just walk out of here or go after the GCS or go after Opus over here, then we will have to fight them. Like That is going to be our next target, Like rather than the Antigonids, so we're not doing the Boeotian strat anymore. I don't like that, tar that uh, target quite as much because by doing that, we're then going to border the Achaeans, the Acarnanians, and potentially Epirus, all of which could attack us, whereas attacking the Antigonids... We're not going to be bordering anyone else. We're just going to be bordering maybe the GCS and Sparta when we come up to here. But for a few cities, we should be fine. So I prefer the other method. But because we're so uncertain right now, I'm going to be patient and I'm not going to attack the Antigonids. This is a, a rare example of me showing patience when it comes to conquest, guys. Because if I go after the Antigonids right now, Go ham, declare war on them, and then the Aetolians attack us. We definitely, definitely, definitely do not have an army good enough or big enough to take on both the Aetolians and the Antigonids in one go. We will just be crushed by the Antigonids while we're fighting the Aetolians, or the Aetolians while we're fighting the Antigonids. So, patience is a virtue in this case, guys. It will also allow us to bring all these troops back across, which will be great. So we've got some troops that we can actually garrison these cities with. Wow. Again, though, another mistake. If I'd have put a fort there last time, these guys wouldn't have been able to get through. So don't make my mistakes, guys. Don't make my mistakes. But we're still going to win out. We shall see. Well, we're, yeah, we, we will still win out. Like, there's no... There's, well, I was going to say there's no problem. There's many problems, but... Uh, we hopefully will win out. <laughs> Any buildings that we want to do right now? Wait, I swore I queued this in last time. Am, am I dumb? Yes, apparently I am very dumb. How did I not queue this in last time? I could have sworn... I must have got distracted. I must have got distracted. So let's see if there's anyone else we can sell... A little bit of map information too. Maybe Ellis. So we'll go for that. Maybe like 700, my friends. You offer too much. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we did. Messene, we'll go for trade rights too. Let's try. Just all we need is like 100. So let's go for 400. That should be fine. There we go. Now we can build it. And I'll try to stop being an idiot, guys. <laughs> I know it's hard for me, but I'll try. And, of course, they did attack. Now, I still think even if we'd had a fort there, they would have attacked us anyway. Oh, my God. Sparta has become a client kingdom of the Antigonids. <laughs> God damn it, man. God damn it. And the Olympic Games are happening, which is great. Thebes got a trader. So, yeah, not ideal for us, really, I've got to say. We're also going to leave this place. I'm going to take everyone out of here. Probably should have done this at the start. If you want to do this at the start, you can do. I just thought we wanted a bit of extra money for a few turns. So we're going to make them happy. We will probably get boat bombed and lose this area rather quickly. But for now, we are going to bring everyone back because I'm going to use these guys to govern one in Athens, 
One in there and an Acontisti in Thebes. And then we're going to use the Hoplite too. But now we should have plenty enough army to deal with these darn Aetolians. And to be fair, these factions early game, my friends, are so, so weak. They have one big army, which is pretty much this one. They may have another one by now, but they have one big army, and that's generally it. So if you can get rid of that army, you'll be in a very good situation going later down the line. And yeah, you'll be in a really good, really good position and ready to just take all of these settlements pretty darn quickly. So we are going to go and attack them. First of all, though, let's have a look at our cash and let's make sure we are continuing to recruit more epibates please very nice unit and let's attack this army they've got a couple of archers no general in this army a couple of prodromoi which is a little bit annoying but should be fine and then some hoplites in here too as well as some peltas boys so we have a clear infantry advantage but yeah pretty much an advantage in everything apart from archers and yeah, we've got another 14 Prodromoi on the way too. So let's get into the battle, guys, and let's see how we do. Here we go, guys. We're in the battle now, of course. Uh, and we're going to get that off, truly off. There we go. Very nice indeed. The Peltas are coming forward. We've got our Hoplites in the middle to try and tank any shots. And then we're going to get our Epibartai around the side. To do as much damage as possible. There they are. They're firing away at the Epibartai, it would seem. But that is fine. No problem whatsoever with that. We are going to chuck our Javis in now. Doesn't look like they're going to uh, enjoy this one. Let's go for that. We're going to get the Prodromoi around the side. What is this? More Prodromoi. So we're going to get our cavalry around this side. Chuck your Javis, men. Chuck your Javis. Absolute chaos for their army around there. So let's come up round the flank. Let's also come forward. And let's get rid of these boys. Let's go for the charge over here. If we can. I don't know whether they'll actually accept that. But that'll be fine. Um, and there we go. Who is routing already? The Peltas are. The Peltas are not happy, are they? So let's fire in there. Hopefully the Epibartai can do a good job. We'll get rid of those boys. Let's see if we can get rid of those Greek archers with our Epibartai too. Very nice indeed. And let's get our archers over here so they can fire at the Prodromoi. That's the main thing. Ideally, I want them, you know, slightly protected. But let's just get here. They do have spearmen, the Peripoloi, so that's always a good thing. Okay, here we go. Here we go, boys. Here we go. Go, 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 go. Okay, they didn't listen, but that's fine. We should still shred that Prodromoi. Nice and easy. That's the general too, so not a problem. Let's get in the back of here. Let's fire our Javis and go. Very nice indeed. You guys fire at them, of course. Here we go. Here we go. That's it. The Prodromoi are running. There's still nine of them left. That captain is hard as fuck. What a beast. I respect that, to be fair. I respect that from the captain for not running with nine Prodromoi. Very likely something that will happen. Go on, charge, men. The Epibartai are going to be beastly in this fight, probably. How are these guys doing? Yeah, good. Are they going to chuck more Javis? Go on, the boys. They've broken one hoplite. So let's go for this one as well. There we go. Are they withdrawing? Oh, that doesn't matter. That's great for us. Looks like everyone is withdrawing apart from the Prodromoi. How many have we killed? We've still got a lot to kill. That's not a problem. So, you know, you guys get in there. Uh, actually, there. You guys get in there. You guys get in there. And we have won this battle pretty darn handily. Like, how many did we lose? Only 22%. That's not bad at all. Very nice. We're going to get the uh, Peripoloi to chase them down. Let's have a look. I just wanted to have a look at the speed of the Epibartai. Are these guys equally tired? No, the Epibartai actually is like less tired. But you can see how much faster they are. I know it doesn't look like much. But over the course of a battle, guys... It definitely adds up. It's very, very, very useful to have that very fast unit in there as well. So let's end the battle and a glorious victory for us. And the Epibata actually did catch that unit before the Prodromoi even got there. So pretty darn good from the Epibata boys. Very nice. 120 kills. 
Nice. They are better than the stats make them seem, to be fair, guys. So, yeah, good unit early game. Very good unit. So, I'll see you back on the campaign map. So, we've pushed them back pretty darn easily. Now, I'm going to get my spy, wherever he is, over this way if he can. Can you go around this way, my friend? I know you're going to be stuck by a lot. Let's have a look at the Aetolians. Now, as you can see, that army dying has meant that they are pretty much dead, which is great for us. That is fantastic. Now, I wanted to just mention as well, guys, when, you know, this happened to us, it may not happen to you. So you've just got to mold yourself on what happens in the game, the RNG that you get. So make sure you mold yourself on that rather than just, just like copying exactly what I do. I'm trying to show you the best strategies, but... You know, things might happen in your game that are totally different. Like, you may get, for example, the Antigonids attack you straight away. And in that case, you're going to fight the Antigonids. For example, with this, if the Aetolians had not attacked us then and just gone back, we would have 100% attacked the Antigonids and put a fort down there so they can't get through. Uh, but attack the Antigonids. So if that doesn't happen to you, I would still go with the original plan of attacking the Antigonids and trying to take all their land in Attica and just in the Peloponnese from them rather than going after the Aetolians. We still have plenty of troops left in this army. Oh, God damn it! Not enough movement points. I should have used the cavalry to do the siege. I thought we'd have enough. Not quite. Not quite. But anyway, let's end the turn get there, guys, and let's see where we get And to. finally, the port has been built in Orchomenos. So we can build the Athenian recruitment. I know it's expensive, but it's worth it in the long run, definitely. Now, got this guy on the boats here. Luckily, he can just make it through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send this Akontistai into Tanagra. Now, I'm going to swap those guys around next turn. I'm going to swap this guy into Thebes. And I'm going to pop this guy in there. Can this guy actually make it to Orchomenos? He can. So, because Orchomenos is a lot richer than Thebes, let's get this guy over there. He has management, and we'll swap those Prodromoi in there. This unit's going to come and join the army. We're still getting more Epibarti over here. I'm not going to recruit anything more from there for now, because we can't afford it. <laughs> so, let's have a look now at our tax rates. Can we swap those around? We can do especially in Tanagra, and Tanagra is growing very quickly at this point. So we're going to go up to high in Athens too, and that will bring us in a lot more money. A lot, 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 lot more money. Very nice indeed. Fantastic. Can we go up to high here? We can. Glorious. Well, let's go through a couple of turns, guys. Let's take a couple of these Aetolian settlements, and let's see if they put up any resistance whatsoever. Well, goddamn Orchomenos started rioting and killed Theodotus. That is very, very unfortunate. <laughs> Poor Theodotus. <laughs> oh, dearie, dearie me. What a terrible, terrible turn of events. So in uh, Tanagra, we are going to get some Prodromoi. Not the strongest unit in the game, but also, you know, we've seen in the Epirus campaign that they are not too bad. Completely awful. They're not awful. Uh, Delphoi, no point building in there right now. We've got this battle to do. Slightly worried that that's going to be 36. That is absolutely fine. No problem. I am just going to occupy now Pactos because it's closer to upgrading as well. It's got a nice port in here too. So should be making a decent amount of money. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take out everyone apart from the Peripoloi. And we're going to do this draw out battle. And then there's one last settlement there. And they do have this island. But I really don't care about that island. I'm happy to leave them alive if they want. So we're going to go for this unit here. What is that? Aetolian cavalry. Oh, they've got some Epilectoi as well. Very nice indeed. Very juicy little army they've got there. Ooh, that's actually going to be quite difficult to beat with our army. We just need to take out their cavalry and then we should be good. So let's get in the battlefield. Let's see if we can beat this army. Now, normally I would recommend you wait for the other army to come in. But because there are other armies coming in right next to them, 
then, uh, yeah, we're just going to bum rush them. I wanted to rush this army and kill it first, but it looks like we are just not going to have chance to do that. So we are going to slow down. We're going to walk, and we're going to take our time and save our fatigue. So here we go, guys. Let's get into the fight. Let's get our guys forward. You guys charging them. You guys charging the Epilectoi. I don't want to give time to this Peltas to fire. So hopefully, if we get close enough, they shouldn't be able to fire. But I think they're going to get a volley off, unfortunately, for us. Looks like the cavalry's coming forward. If they want to charge my hoplites, that is no problem to me at all. So let's keep coming forward. We're going to bring our cavalry forward too. And hopefully go and try and sneak that general in the back. Going to make sure this army is on fire at will. The Epibarta is taking a bit of a bit of damage there. But okay, yeah, that's why there's two generals, of course. I forgot about that. So I was like wondering why this was a general too. What is that? That is just an Epilectoi. Just an epilectoy. A bloody good unit, that's what it is. Guys, keep coming. Come on. What are you doing, Prodromoy? You fucking idiots. Honestly. Oh, why? Why did you stand there? Just fucking run. Like, I did I tell you to stand there? No. So why do you do it? Because you're a fucking idiot, that's why. Fuck you, piece of shit. Come on, let's go. Let's go. Let's kill this Aetolian cavalry. Our generals... Should definitely be better than the Aetolian Cavalry. Let's lead that general away. I don't mind that at all. Because we can, uh, you know, try and take out this cavalry a lot quicker if he's not there to help. There we go. Fantastic. Killed that general. Very nice indeed. You guys get into that fight there. And the Prodromoi, keep running, my friend. Keep running. What is this? That's the Peltas still firing away. But you can see the Epilectoi and the Epibartai. Sorry, the Athenian Hoplites. And the Epibartai doing okay. But if this Epilectoi gets any closer, we're going to have to go. We're going to have to go. Get out, my friends. We are not fighting that Epilectoi in there, especially taking a charge from it. Absolutely not. Not something we want to do at all. So let's keep running. Let's run over this way if we can. Let's do the old jink. There we go. A nice little maneuver. Let's keep going. This is going to be quite tough to win this battle, I'm not going to lie. You guys come up this way to meet in the middle. And then we will probably go for a little cheeky charge on the general. There we go. He is running away now. I don't want to take the uh, don't want to take the Peltasts to fire at us at all. We're going to go either side of this general and try to shoot, try to attack him in the back. Our progeny are going to get shredded. They are pretty much sacrificial lambs in this case. So we're going to come round. There we go. We'll go for the charge now. Rally the men, my friend. Rally the men. Hopefully that'll keep the Prodromoi in the fight for a little bit longer. That charge was not good for us, though. But it looks like we are going to win overall, unless that Aetolian comes in. So let's get out. We are not taking a charge, remember, guys? I do not want to take a charge. We give charges. We do not take them. We give charges. If our guys can get out, that would, that would be good. That would be, you know enjoyable. Looks like the Aetolian Cavalry took a bit of a battering there anyway. So let's turn. Let's go for this fight then. And we'll use you to turn around. To get around the back of them. They're all going to get very tired now. Especially running up this hill. But I think we can still do a good job if we can get rid of this Aetolian Cavalry. There we go men. Charge in. Charge in. We should still beat it. We still have a lot more men than them. But it doesn't look like they want to stick around and fight, of course, because they're little pussios. But that has allowed us to just fully surround this hoplite unit and kill them to death. Kill them to death, my friends. There we go. This is it. This is what we like to see. Finally, a lot of maneuvering in this battle. But yes, and also, there we go. That's, that's their king. And their other general has run. Good. That's fantastic. Right then. Let's uh, turn around quick, 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 men, quick, quick. And we are just going to get behind them. Unfortunately, our men are so tired now. That's not ideal. Uh, these guys should be able to fire. But hopefully they fire at the Epilectoi. I'm going to pop down here with these guys. They're less tired now, less tired. Let's come. We just got to make sure that this other unit doesn't come back. Hmm. I don't really want to charge these... Uh, Hell task, but we're going to have to, it seems. So let's go for that. Let's also get you to fire one more time if you can. Fire one more time. Halt. Fire one more time. 
That's what I said. Fire one more time. We're also going to just pop here for a second. Maybe pop up there, ready to charge uh, into their backs. And hopefully we can kill all these guys, because otherwise, you know, we're not taking the city on this turn. But that's fine. The Epilectoy are going to be an absolute bastard to kill. But we should be good. We should be good. Let's charge the Peltasts. That's going to be a lot better for us. We're going to have to pop this way slightly with this general. Then go for it. Because I don't want to charge the Epilectoy. Because, of course, the Epilectoy... Oh, look at the guys go flying. Fantastic. Also, our guys have gone flying. But let's get out now. We do not want to fight that Epilectoy at all. If we can help it. You guys could fire your Javis now at them. And what do we have? 50 Aetolian Peltas. Would be nice if the Prodromoy had survived. But they, of course, were a sacrificial lamb for us. Oh, come on, Epilectoy. Fucking fight me, you little pussy -o. Stop chasing my calf. Stop chasing. Stop chasing. We don't like the chase, man. Guys, fucking fire. There we go. God damn, sometimes, man. Sometimes, man. These units are stupid. There we go. There we go. Let's chase down as many of these guys as we can. We're already exhausted. We're not going to get any more tired. So that's not a problem. Let's keep coming around. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. And let's keep maneuvering as much as possible. There we go. We'll surround this unit now. Have we killed many of those boys? Yes, we have. How many are left? 100 out of 440. I mean, most of that is the Aetolian Epilectoy. So we're going to leave that 11 behind. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us. Uh, of course, that would be awful. Let's speed this up now. We don't need to go so slow anymore. There we go. Fighting to the death. Let's kill them all. Kill them all. There we go. Now we even have time to get rid of those boys. Glorious victory, my friends. Glorious victory. Tough one. Tough one. Really tough one. But a glorious victory nonetheless. Very nice. Yes, 19 men left. And that's it. Less than 10%. We should have taken the city. Glorious victory, my friends. Very nice. Let's take Thermon. This time, we are going to occupy again. Because although it is a town, it's ready to upgrade. So we're going to upgrade it ourselves. Because Thermon, all of these capitals, guys, by the way. All of the capitals of these minor nations. All have level 2 military buildings in. And level 4 recruitment. Like I say, when that patch drops, destroying that recruitment building is no longer going to be a big thing so of course that's going to be difficult uh, to make as much money as you do now but you still should be doing quite well at this point we're going to leave our two prodromoi behind the whole tours and we're going to go for oinadai over here and we're going to take oinadai next turn i'm going to just check on epirus for a second see how they're doing that's gcs right yeah looks like they're fine doesn't look like they want to come and attack us at any point and let's pop back on the peloponnese now, we're going to take this one, and then we'll probably, yeah, we'll probably wrap things up. I've been recording for about two hours at this point, so we'll probably wrap things up. I mean, we're making 9,000 a turn, my friends, 9,000 a turn. So, ideally, we do want that Akontistai now to get in Orkomenos, so at least we have a general in there, uh, sorry, a, a unit in there. Uh, but we did lose a general. We're still going to keep recruiting in uh, in Athens, of course. And in these settlements... Oh, that's not too happy now, Pactos. And yeah, that's good. Fantastic. So what do we want to build then? That is the main question right now. Where are we building? We're building in most places. So Tanagra over here. Tanagra did get that. But we can either go for a military building... And try to start getting some more Epibates because I think they are level 2. No, they are not right now. But that will allow us to get Boeotian Hoplites, who are a pretty darn good Hoplite unit. Although, how are they compared to ours? Ours, 14, 10, 37. Theirs, 15, 11, 38. So, theirs are just one better in everything. So, that would be level 2. But that is level 2 recruitment center as well. So on level 1 recruitment center, building these will not make any difference at all. Like, won't make any difference. So, yes, we can either go for that or we can go for a port. So I think this place is just going to be used to recruit Prodromoi for the foreseeable future. So let's have a look at a port. 183. We really just can't turn that down right now. We need that extra cash. 
Thebes over here, not really worth building anything. Same with Delphoi. So we'll save the rest of our money. And then we'll also try to train a couple of extra units. We're getting a Prodromoi in there. In Orchomenos, we are repairing and we're getting our Epibartai in there. Fantastic. So I think we've got 7,000 in the bank. That's pretty nice, my friends. Pretty nice. So let's end the turn. Let's see what happens. Well, the Akarnanian League wants to be friendly for now. That's not going to last. <laughs> but I'm going to accept it for now because it will give us a little bit more freedom to do what we want once we've taken out the Aetolians. And finally, we have a candidate for adoption and a coming of age. Finally, we've got some people. This guy is not good. He is not very good. He's also rebellious. Uh, yeah, minus two law. But we just need generals. We just need people to fill these cities and govern these cities. And also, we got this guy, Heraclitus, come of age. Which one are you? Emnesis? Heraclitus here. He's already three management. That's pretty darn nice, my friend. 15 taxes. That is good. We're going to keep you in there for now. We're also going to have a look at our richest cities. So let's go for turn income. Athens and then Orchomenos, then Tanagra. So ideally, we want governors in all of those settlements. So let's go for Cliogenos in... Cliogenes in Tanagra. And we'll go for Emnesis in Orchomenos. And we're going to bring those Acontistae back to Athens, of course. Athens is a little bit upset right now. Not a problem. Let's get rid of this area of them. 36 he killed. No problem. Oinadai. Hmm. Now, could enslave just to try and grow Athens slightly faster. But let's occupy for now. Problem being here is we have no one to govern this settlement. Who have we got in here? We've got those Peripoloi, and we've got some hoplites there that ideally I would like to actually use properly. So we're going to swap them out. I'm going to send this army back home, and we're going to leave Philokoros here for now. I'm going to send this army back home, and we're going to send this Akontistoi, Akontistoi, Akontistai over this way to replace Philokoros. Should have probably done that from here to start with, but that's fine. It'll only take them an extra turn. No problem whatsoever. So, yeah, missile range. Athenian recruitment now in Orchomenos is getting done. Fantastic. So let's see what we can actually build again. Good. Athens. Ooh, Athens not happy. Let's keep Athens happy. We really don't want to get them slightly upset. Let's destroy this building in here. And let's just uh, repair that. And let's just go for a standard farm. I think that's going to be the best option. And we'll put it up to very high for now while we can. Might as well squeeze as much money out of the locals as possible. Let's also have a look at the trader for now, Pactos. Looks like it doesn't make any difference. But it probably will make a difference when we get to market level. So let's get that level in there. And also remember, guys, markets are often the prerequisite for many, many buildings. So... Getting the trader in there is not going to be a problem, even if it doesn't provide us with any extra cash. So, yeah, nice 9,600 people there. These areas are still building. Glorious. Let's uh, churn through another couple of turns, and we'll talk about what I would do next. So we actually got the first reforms. Very, very nice indeed. That means that we can actually now recruit the Thurio Foray. Let's have a look at it. 34... 14 and 12. It's a fine unit. I still prefer the Epibartai. More morale. Slightly less attack, but they have a sword, of course, so it's better than that 12 spear attack. Unless, it, of course, fighting the uh, cavalry. Another candidate for adoption. That's fantastic. He is all the way over here, so is there anyone else that we would like to send back? Uh, let's have a look. Can we get in there? Yeah, we'd, we, we would probably want to send back the Peripoloi. So let's get that in there. Let's get the Peripoloi on the way back. We're going to send you to deal with Philokoros over here. And we're going to send this unit in to Delphoi so that we can send this unit all the way back. I feel like if you join, will you be able to get there? No, you will not. You just stop everyone else getting there. Well, that's fine. 
Let's get in. We've got another Epibartite too. So we're going to go for that. We're going to go for another Epibartite here. Another Prodromoy in there. Orchomenos hasn't built yet. We did get the reforms. I wonder what is the trigger for that. Control 10 cities. Oh, we actually controlled 10 cities. Wow. Didn't even realize that. Nice. Fantastic. That's very good indeed. Let's also make sure we're adjusting the tax rates in these places to as high as we can make them right now. Because we need the money, even though we have got 20,000 in the bank. <laughs> nice. Fantastic. There we go. So let's get this army retrained. Go through a couple more turns. And then see what we do. And it looks like Epirus wants to be a little bit happier with us as well. Fantastic. Well, nice. Thank oh, you, thanks. Epirus. I will be your ally most definitely. And the Akarnanians attacked us. <laughs> nice. So, guys, here we are. We are about 10 turns, 11 turns in. We're making 9,800 a turn, which is pretty insane, which is really nice. In fact, very nice indeed. So let's get... Well, we can't actually get in there either. That's fine. They're not going to build a siege equipment for a little bit. But with this army, all of the ones that are not retraining, let's get them moving just to make sure we defend that settlement. It looks like we might not get there in time. So Philokoros might die, but what do they have? I mean, yeah, he probably will die. To be honest. <laughs> but that's fine. It, uh, Like I say, that alliance, they offered us the alliance. Just proof that obviously all of that is just a, you know, handshake agreement. Like I said at the start, they really, really don't care about it. But let's talk about what I do in this situation. So the, uh, the Akarnanians have attacked us. The Aetolians are still, you know, alive and at war with us. So what I would do is I would take Stratos and chain through these two Akarnanian cities by recruiting a ship in here if we can. So can we recruit a ship? We can go to Trireme. Or we could potentially get two ships and just make everything a little bit safer. That'd be fantastic. So we get the two ships, get rid of this. Oh, no, we don't get rid of that, Admiral. What we do is we keep those ships safe. <laughs> and then... We will, uh, you know, kill the Akonanians, take Stratos, try and sell Stratos to the GCS. That is what I'd do, guys. Because, of course, the GCS are, you know, programmed to be passive to the player. So, by getting that, they will become a buffer state against Epirus. And it's very likely we'll be able to keep that alliance with Epirus. And then what I'd do is I'd go and take Lucas and Seymour and then chain into Zakynthos over there too. Now what I would do after that very much depends on the RNG. If no one attacks you, including the Achaeans, which looks set to attack us very soon, um, I would then go for the Boeotian strat of taking out the Antigonids in this region, getting, the, getting rid of them in the Piraeus, taking that draw out battle, getting those two settlements in one, taking Evia and then taking Attica, then Corinth and coming down in the Peloponnese, and then cleaning up the Peloponnese. However, if someone else attacks us, that's who we're going to focus on. So just, uh, you know, base yourself on your RNG like I always say, guys. Always say. The key thing with Athens, this is the key thing with Athens, because it's so difficult as a start, anyone that attacks you must be taken out with extreme aggression as quick as possible. Do not wait around. Do not dilly-dally. If someone attacks you, they die. Obviously, you know, the Antigonids, you're not going to take them out in two turns. But what you can do is take out their armies in these regions. You know, taking out that one and that one. And taking those important settlements very quickly from them. So you've got to blitz with Athens if you get attacked, guys. This is not a nation that you can take slowly. Because, of course, you know, if you take it slowly, you're just going to let all these nations build up loads of power. And we don't want that to happen, do we? We do not want that to happen. I would say we're in a pretty darn good situation now. If you really want to, you can, you know, sort of fort wall off here, 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 anywhere that anyone else is going to come in. This doesn't need a fort wall because now Pactos 
is in the way, as you can see. So they don't need a fort there. But sort of these northern bits where they can come through, you can fort wall all that off and make sure that they're good. We are very rich, but remember, in this patch, recruitment is a big, big limiter for you in the patch, especially as a very small nation. So, you know, building up your recruitment buildings, we're on Re Athenium Recruitment 2 here, as quick as possible is something that you should be looking to do all the time as you are growing. Because as we've seen, money now in 0.6 is not an issue. It's not an issue at all, even on very hard. So, yeah, destroying um, the enemy recruitment buildings, although that's going to be removed at some point. Um, but building up your own recruitment is going to be so, so powerful for you in the long run. And yeah, that is fantastic. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a pleasure as always. I've not done the difficulty, have I? <laughs> Let's talk about the difficulty. Easy one for me with Athens. I think Athens is still one of the most difficult nations in the game. And as such, it will remain a five out of five. Maybe it's slightly easier than 0.5, but it is still a very, very difficult nation. So I am going to give it a 5 out of 5 rating, guys. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. If you did, a like and a subscribe would be massively appreciated. But thank you very much for watching, guys. It's been a pleasure, and I will see you all again on the next video.